All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. It is Tuesday, May 28th. We've got a full MLB slate to dive into in today's video like we always do. I'm going to go through each and every one of these games. I'm going to give you my lean on the side. I'll give you my lean on the total. We'll talk about any other plays like player props that we like within the game as well. But as always, guys, all of my final plays, so I'm rolling myself. If you do want to fade me, all those plays will be in the pinned comment. We didn't have a video yesterday, so two days ago, this is the recap that we had. Red Sox on the money line. Velasquez under one and a half strikeouts. Um, we had the Phillies' first five. They don't get that one, but our, that was our sole loss of the day. And then Reed Detmers here, over two and a half earned runs was a really, really good look there. He finishes, um, not trying to be an innings he pitched, but three earned runs. So we love to see that. That Nelson Velasquez was under one and a half strikeouts. We don't have that listed out there, but a three in one night. We shall take it. Guys, we don't have a ride of the day because we were away for the weekend, but let's get the ride of the days in the comments today. If you guys don't know what the ride of the day is, all you got to use is that hashtag ride of the day in the comments. I'm jumping on board with one person's pick, giving you a shout out in the next video, win or loss. If you win, we celebrate you. We continue to ride with your plays. If you lose, you got to face the womp womp. So go ahead and drop those hashtag ride of the days in the comments. Uh, hit that subscribe button. Hit that like button. Let's jump into game number one here. We got the Mets taking on the Dodgers. This is the first head of a doubleheader here, so we're not going to put too much emphasis on it. Um, I don't like betting doubleheaders, and if I do, it's usually the first game. Um, in fact, I usually either go first game only, or I'll take the underdog twice and hope that they win one of the games um, because they're usually, you know, that'll if they win one, it'll cover for the other or they win both. That'd be great. Um, but nonetheless, this one is probably the only one that we're going to isolate to. We have uh, Tyler McGill on the mound for the Mets. Only a couple starts on the year. Going up against Tyler Glass now, who we know about here. Um, he's coming off a couple shaky starts, though, uh, in all honesty. And when I say shaky, I mean, you know, five inning pitched, four earned runs, letting up a dinger. And then he goes uh, against Arizona, five innings pitched, um, six Ks, but three earned runs. So shaky for him is a little bit different than, uh, I guess, other guys out there. Tyler McGill, on the other hand, looking decent to start the year against Milwaukee and then Cleveland. Two offenses that you can't really tip your nose at here. He's got a three flat ERA with a 1.33 whip, a uh, FIP of 2.69, but his expected FIP is at 2.6. So I do expect him to have some troubles today, but we'll talk about a player prop with him in just a second because I don't think he's going to absolutely stink out there. But this would be a spot in which I have to back glass now and the Dodgers. Unfortunately, they're minus 190 right now. So this would be some sort of a parlay piece or even a potential uh, first five run line in terms of odds you can get for that. It's still not all that great, but um, that minus 0.5 in the first five would be minus 145. So that's kind of how I would look to play this uh, double header here. The Dodgers have lost. Four, four or five straight, right? They just got swept by Cincinnati. They should come out with their ace on the mound a little bit fired up. So Dodgers minus 0.5 in the first five would be my side lean here. In terms of the total, if you can get this at eight and a half, I don't mind taking a peek at the under. Um, the Dodgers, though, I do want them to come out and score in the first five innings. It doesn't really seem like their offense is absolutely firing on all cylinders. Now, the Mets offense looks okay, um, but they're just kind of mediocre middle of the pack against right in a pitcher. So I'll lean slightly towards the under as well. Now, player prop that I was considering here, um, and I do like the odds, minus 112 over on FD. Most other books have this in the minus 130s, but Tyler McGill over four and a half strikeouts. So this season, he has a four strikeout game, um, and that was through four innings, and he has five innings, seven strikeouts against Cleveland, a team that doesn't strike out all that much. And what I like to see is he throws a fastball, and then he's going to go to the slider, this is a Dodgers team that whiffs on sliders all the time and strikes out a lot. So if his slider's on and he only throws it about 15% of the time, but if his slider's going, I could see him getting five strikeouts here. So that's definitely something to consider. But again, my concern here is that are the Dodgers going to be fired up after losing five straight games? They have a double header here. Like I could see that happening too, but give me, give me a uh, McGill over four and a half strikeouts. Keep an eye on the pin comment to see if those do truly become final plays. Next up, we have Baltimore taking on the Red Sox here. Baltimore, huge favorites in this spot. I know, um, you know, Red Sox come to Baltimore here yesterday, and Baltimore wins 11-3. to Irvin was on the mound there going up against Cooper Criswell. Today, we have Grayson Rodriguez um, on the bump for Baltimore going up against Brian Bayo, who Brian Bayo, I do like, has had some hit or miss starts here. One of his, they did lose the game, but one of his hit starts, though, was five and a third pitched of just uh, one earned run. 
three runs came in, so I guess it's not one of his best starts. But that was earlier this year against Baltimore. Grayson Rodriguez had a decent outing. Um, I think it was in that same series, too. I could be uh, mistaken there. But he had five Ks through five and two-thirds, two earned runs, six hits, no home runs, um, 16 pitches burning. So both these pitchers fared pretty well, you could say, um, against the other uh, batting lineup earlier this season. But for the odds that we're looking at, I do think it's worth considering Red Sox money line here at plus 140. Like, this pitching matchup, this, these offenses, I don't necessarily see Baltimore with a massive, massive advantage. The only thing I could see is the fact that you're looking at a Baltimore team that uh, just won 11-3 to yesterday, but... Um, you know, they've won, what, four straight, five straight games maybe? But that was four games against the White, or yeah, four straight games against the White Sox, then one against the Red Sox. Like, the Red Sox just got out of a, a grueling series against Milwaukee, um, and they had swept Tampa Bay prior to that. So I think that these two teams, though I do think Baltimore's a better team, don't get me wrong, for minus 166, I think that the flip side could be this spot here. Now, in terms of a total, we're looking at eight and a half. Um, I think both these pitchers are going to get the job done in terms of, you know, going through five in, say five and two thirds at minimum, um, allowing two to three runs. So, uh, hoping the bullpens can kind of stick it out here. Decent bullpens, uh, Red Sox, fifth best ERA, uh, ninth best whip, and then Baltimore, fourth best whip, 11th best ERA. So, I think these bullpens can kind of hang. Uh, I'm gonna take the under in this spot as well. No real player props that I'm loving overall. All right, Detroit taking on Pittsburgh. Uh, Tariq Screwball, Scooball on the mound for Detroit, going up against Jared Jones. So, he should have, should have an absolute pitcher's duel here. Jones, 3.05 ERA on the season, 0.97 whip, uh, 3.5 FIP, 2.91 expected FIP, an average against of 215, and a K rate of nearly 30. Tariq Skubal on the side of uh, Detroit here, 2.25 ERA, a .85 whip, a FIP of 2.15, an expected FIP of 2.55, and an average against of 187. So two absolute studs, young studs on the mound here. Um, and that total reflects it, right? It's at seven. The way that I would probably look at this total, and we'll get to the sides in just a second, is probably the first five. You're still paying a lot of juice, so it's probably not all that worth it. But I'd consider the under four. Um, you get that over on ESPN bet right now for minus 160. Like I said, still pretty juiced. But you look at under four and a half, it's minus 195. So there's some push potential if they do get to four in the first five. But that's the only way I can play this total at seven. I do believe these pitchers are going to be able to, to go out there and, and dominate. But the bullpens altogether, neither one of them um, all that impressive to me. So I look at that and I'm like... You know, I'd hate to see Jones and Screwball pitch a really, really good game. Then all of a sudden the bullpens blow it and we don't have much room to work with because that totals at seven. So I would consider uh, taking a first five under here, depending on what you can get and what you feel comfortable with the price. In terms of a side, man, I tried to get to Pittsburgh. I honestly did. Uh, but to me, Detroit has the offensive edge. We can even jump into the dashboard here. By the way, guys, if you do want access to this dashboard, all you have to do is become a channel member. That's $2.99 a month. There's a join button in the description, also next to the subscribe button, and I'll put a link in the pinned comment as well. Uh, you get a, this dashboard um, delivered on the community tab of our channel. Every single day, you get a link for uh, the month. So yeah, if you want to check it out, uh, become a channel member, $2.99 a month. But right here is what I'm looking at uh, in terms of where I see the edge. Uh, you can see Detroit, last 30 days of batting overall and against right-handed pitchers compared to Pittsburgh overall against left-handed pitchers. Just Detroit has a little bit of an edge, but you can see this pitching should be pretty damn good. They're kind of greened out across the board, two absolute studs. But ultimately, Detroit has the better offense. Uh, I'm going to lean Detroit on the money line in this spot. In terms of player props, um, I almost want to look at Jared Jones over six and a half strikeouts. That's plus 126 right now over on FanDuel. Um, he's hit that in... I want to say, uh, yeah, 70% of his starts. He has 10 starts through the season. The issue is he's been kind of cold. His last uh, five starts, he's only hit it in two. So this is a guy that is dealing um, a stride, uh you know, a Detroit team that if there's anything that you can say about their offense right now, that they're not doing all that well is striking out and walking. So I do think that you could see for a plus 120 plus play, right? So what, plus 126 right now? But even if you can get it at plus 120 or anything like that, I think you could consider Jared Jones over six and a half strikeouts because he's going to have to show up today. And I'm hoping that he knows that, right? Like he knows he's going up against a Cy Young as pitcher in uh, screwball. So yeah, I like that spot for him overall. At Cincinnati taking on St. Louis here. Uh, Cincinnati favored in this one. Obviously, we just talked about it when we talked about the Dodgers. They uh, had a really good series against them. Um, but let's not sleep on the fact that we have uh, the, the the Cardinals here who are 7-3 and three in their last 10. They lose 
three to one yesterday. So obviously that's worth noting. Um, on the mound today for Cincinnati is going to be Andrew Abbott, who looked pretty good in his last start, uh, seven shutout innings, going up against Kyle Gibson, who also didn't have a bad start in his last outing. Uh, he had four shutout innings pitched there, um, 21 pitches per inning though. So I do think that this pitching matchup could be a little dicey, like. Advantage probably on the Cincinnati side of things with Abbott. They also have crazy to say because I don't believe in their bullpen, but the better bullpen as well. But when you get to the offensive side of things, neither one of these teams really impressed me, especially St. Louis, who is kind of middle of the pack in most offensive categories. But against left-handed pitchers, they're not all that great. The only thing they're doing exceptional is not striking out. So I think we do have two offenses here that are not, you know, at the top of their game. We saw 3-1 game yesterday. There's a lot of wind blowing out to center field, so I think that might be why this line is staying at nine even after it came up five run shorts yesterday. I'm still going to lean towards the under. I hope that these pitchers can kind of get the job done. Um, but more or less, I'm, I don't want to say I'm fading the offenses because prior to this series, it looked like both these offenses were kind of getting into gear, right? Um, and Cincinnati, did I say Cincinnati lost? Cincinnati won three one yesterday, if, if, if I misspoke there. But nonetheless, they scored three runs, but St. Louis only came with one. I'm hoping they kind of stay in that same run. So I'll take the under nine as well as maybe for plus money, taking a peek at St. Louis. Cause like I said, they do have the better offense, just not against left-handed pitchers. So that's kind of dicey there. Um, but overall, I think that this could be a good spot. This is a, uh, this is a, a spot in which Cincinnati is kind of riding high, but I still think St. Louis again, seven of the last 10 games they've won and they, they lose yesterday. So um, I think it could be a decent spot for them uh, to kind of eat, not the series up at two, uh, at 1-1. One, one. So give me St. Louis on the money line. I don't know if that becomes a final play over the, the total. I do like the under nine as a spot as well, but both these pitchers can blow up. I think we know that. All right, Rays taking on Oakland here. Um, in terms of what we're looking at, uh, we do have Tampa Bay, who's kind of struggling, or at least, you know, not exceeding expectation, right? Going up against Oakland, who also has not really played all that well. They haven't had the easiest of schedule. Um, they played Houston, then Kansas City. Then they did take two of three against Colorado, and then played Houston again. You know what I mean? So it's not like they've, they've kind of been through the ringer, I guess you could say. Um, Tampa Bay also has just had a, you know, they went Boston, Toronto, Boston, then played Kansas City as well. So I'm not going to sit here and say that they've had an easy schedule. Like tell on the mound for Tampa Bay today, going up against Mitch, uh, Mitch Spence. I'm going to lean towards the Rays. I don't know if I can swallow that minus 166 price tag, but I do think that they are, or at least should be, I should say, the better team. Even though Oakland, you know, you can make the argument they have the better offense against righties. Um, they definitely have the better bullpen, surprisingly, or not surprisingly. Um, I just got to trust Lytell in this spot against uh, Mitch Spence. So I'll lean Tampa Bay. But again, seeing Tampa Bay and wanting to bet them at minus 166 when they've let us down and, and kind of, you know, definitely didn't rise to the, the occasion season thus far, kind of tough to pull the trigger on. We do see a total at seven and a half here. I almost want to take a peek at the over, hoping that the Rays can go out there and, you know, uh, put up, I would say, four runs themselves and hopefully Oakland can kind of follow suit and we have ourselves, you know, at least a 5-4 type of a game or a 5-3 type of a game. So... We'll see if we pull the trigger on that. But again, it's this is tough to trust the Rays. It's almost like you talk about the Rays thinking of what they can do, but they very rarely seem to do do, if that makes sense. Do do. I don't know what I'm saying. But give me the Rays here on the money line as well as a potential lean towards the over. All right, guys, before we do move on, I want to talk to you about BetMGM. If you guys are not signed up over there yet, I think you should check it out. They have a great offer for first-time bettors, up to $1,500 paid back if your first bet loses. And I actually have something up right now that I've never played before. We can see if we can get a little bonus today. I guess they send a home run. So choose your zone to start. All right, let's see. I'm going up, up, upper inside here. Oh, see you later. Oh, double. All right. I got a 33% same game parlay boost. All right. That was kind of fun. Um, guys, I'll have a link in the pinned comment for MGM. I talk about it in the NBA videos all the time. Their same game parlay odds are like far done. Like I can't believe some of these odds compared to FD and DK and whatnot. So if BetMGM is not in your arsenal of sports books, I'm always encouraging you guys to be able to have multiple to get the best price. MGM's prices and odds are awesome for both baseball and basketball. Go check it out, guys. That link again is in the pinned comment. Look at that deal. Your first bet, if it loses, you get up to $1,500 paid back in bonus bets. BetMGM, link in the pinned comment. Go check it out. Let's move on to the rest of the slate here. I'm curious how I'm going to use that 33% boost. I'm going to do that more often. That was kind of fun. And, and you get a boost out of it. 
Atlanta taking on Washington here. Um, this is obviously, uh, should be at least an Atlanta spot. But Jake Irvin's on the mound for Washington. So I could see how someone would get to it. But overall, I, I, I can't really can't really fully get there, I guess I would say. Um, in terms of odds, plus 210 on Washington seems like it could be worth the flyer, but those odds are there for a reason, right? This is a Washington team that doesn't bat lefties all that well. Atlanta not batting righties all that well either, but um, Washington really struggling against the fastball. That's Max Fried's first pitch. He throws it like 40% of the time. Um, you can make the same argument about Atlanta. I get it, uh, but overall, Atlanta's bullpen uh, surpasses Washington. Uh, I do think that, you know, as good as Irvin's been, I trust Freed. So a lot of people are probably going to be on Washington today. Um, and, you know, like I said, you can definitely make an argument to get there. Uh, I think that they've won, uh, what was it, 7-4, to 8-4 to four yesterday. I just don't necessarily see that two games in a row, if that makes sense. Like, for whatever reason, I think that it could be a public pick today uh, for Washington for plus 210, you know. So I'm on the Atlanta side. Maybe this is like a Dodgers and Braves parlay, something like that. Um, if we were to do that for game one of the Dodgers, you know, we're looking at a parlay that is worth, let's see, got it up right in front of me, um, for plus 110 over on BetMGM. That's better than any other uh, books out there. So there you go. There's another reason why BetMGM is great. So maybe we consider something like that for plus money. Um, I just have a feeling a lot of people are going to like the Nats today, uh, but I just don't. In terms of the total, however, um, I do think that this one has a chance of going over. You have two pitchers on the mound that I feel like everyone thinks are going to shut down the other offense. Um, but I think Atlanta is Atlanta is due, in my opinion, uh, to just kind of go on a scoring rampage. We've seen these little spurts of like eight runs like they did one or two games ago. They had nine runs against Chicago. At some point, these Atlanta bats should heat up. And for a total of eight, this was nine. Probably wouldn't consider it, but uh, I'll take the over in this spot as well. All right, White Sox taking on Toronto on the mound for the White Sox. going to be Mike Clevenger, uh, who is not all that great. Going up against uh, Kevin Gosman, who, like I keep saying, he doesn't seem like he's fully there now. That he pitched really well against the Detroit team last time out. Six innings pitch, one and run, 10 Ks. That looks like the Gosman we know, and he's had a couple of those starts this year, but has he been able to string two of them together? When he pitched against the Dodgers and then the Washington Nationals, he did. But other than that, still a little shaky, uh, but not enough for me to not consider Toronto. Now, what I would do and probably the way to play it would be over two and a half runs uh, for their team total over the first five. That's minus 110 over on ESPN right now. Um, because I don't know if I could fully look at this this um, team total and say I like them to score five runs. They did do that last game, but for whatever reason, like uh, this Toronto lineup, I just don't fully feel like they have a really good top of the lineup, and then sort of the guys in the middle lineup just don't really uh, uh, do it for me. And overall, like even if we go into the dashboard here, another thing that kind of scares me, you're going to get fastball, cutter, um, and look at this, fastball and cutter for the Jays. Not the pitch that they're hitting really well. Chicago now... Number one and runs above average against a splitter. Gosman's going to throw a lot of splitters. So I think I do like Toronto here, right? They're kind of priced out. But the way that I like it the most is saying go score runs over two and a half in the first five. If the White Sox somehow can compete with you and everything like that, um, great. Because we don't need the, the Jays to, to win, right? We just need them to score runs in the first five. I do think that they do win. I'm trusting Gosman, but... For whatever reason, you know, like, like I said, I, I don't love the, the Jays' offense. Chicago hits splitters really well. Gosman's been a little inconsistent. Makes me shake my boots a little bit about just straight up taking the Jays' money line. Um, so give me them on the first five over two and a half. It's kind of a way of betting on that offense or actually fading Clevenger without having to worry about Gosman having a good start in a sense. In terms of the total here, it's sitting at eight. I think this one could be like a another five to one type of a game. So I'll lean towards the under, but I'm still rooting for Toronto to score a decent amount of runs. And by the way, in terms of player props here, this is like a slight arbitrage opportunity. I, I don't know if by the time we edit it, this get this video out, these plays will still be available. But Mike Clevenger's over four and a half strikeouts is plus 100 on FanDuel. It's plus 105 over on Caesars right now to take the under. So his over is even money. If that hits, it would kind of cover whatever you put on the under. But if the under hit, you would kind of win just a little bit of change. You know what I mean? So uh, kind of like a risk-free free play on the under if you also take the over. But again, make sure those odds are where they are. And obviously, you need those two sports books. Again, over 4.5 on FanDuel for plus 100, under 4.5 strikeouts on Caesars for plus 105. If the over hits, you know, you'd lose the under, but the over, you'd win back exactly how much you'd put on the under. So it's kind of like a push, right? Null and void. But if the under hits, you'd pick up like 5 cents type of thing. So... Uh, you know, or $5, depending on how much you put on it. So worth uh, worth considering there. But I don't know if we uh, if those odds are still going to be available by the time this video comes out. 
All right, Milwaukee taking on Chicago. Peralta on the mound for Milwaukee. Going up against Ben Brown. Ben Brown's having himself uh, a decent season here. Now he's on the road. He's not as good on the road as he is at home, um, whereas Freddie Peralta is absolutely dominant at home. So I think that that's why this price is where it is. Uh, Milwaukee's offense, you know, in the last 30 days, also looking uh, a little bit better as well. So I think that this could be a spot in which we look at Milwaukee, but minus 162, little pricey for me. Um, updated at actually at minus 150 on ESPN. So maybe that could be a move. But again, that's a pretty decent price tag here. And you wouldn't want to go first five necessarily because uh, Milwaukee's bullpen definitely has an edge over Chicago. Milwaukee top 10 in both ERA and whip, whereas uh, Chicago is bottom 10 in both ERA and whip. So yeah, you might be able to get better odds with the first five, but I still think this is a Milwaukee full game play. Um, Freddy Peralta is really good against left-handed hitters. Um, a lot of a lot of uh, righties in this Cubs lineup, so definitely also something that kind of counters that. The biggest thing here is that I do think Milwaukee's going to win. Freddy Peralta, I do trust, but that minus 160 and beyond, maybe if we can get it at minus 40, it'd be worth considering. But, uh, you know, I do, like I said, trust Peralta. 117 plate appearances against. He's got uh, against his current Cubs roster. An average against of uh, 163, that's great. An expected batting average against of 182. An expected Woba of 280. And a slugging here expected of 278. Like, for all considerations... Freddie Peralta should deal today. So uh, give me Milwaukee on the money line. Total at eight. I think this one stays under because um, I think Peralta holds Chicago to like, you know, two, three runs in the first five. And hopefully that bullpen can do their job. So give me the under as well as Milwaukee. I'm more likely to pull trigger on Milwaukee, though. Uh, Minnesota taking on Kansas City here. We have what should be a decent pitching matchup. We have uh, Simeon Woods Richardson on the mound, 2.57 ERA. And he's also been really good at home. Um, this season here, home whip of .91, a FIP of 1.13, an expected FIP of 2.8, batting average against of 200 flat, which is really good. Going up against Cole Reagans, though, on the mound for Kansas City, who has been exceptional on the road. 0.99 uh, whip on the road, 2.46 FIP, an expected FIP of 3, an average against of 198. So I think that you have two good pitchers here. The total would indicate that as well, obviously. Um, what we're seeing is a 7.5. So I do think that that's uh, fair. I think that this could be like a 4-3 to three game at max. And I'm going to lean towards Kansas City. I think that this is a decent spot for them. They've lost a couple now, um, and I kind of expect them to to bounce back here. This game was high scoring yesterday. Uh, Minnesota ultimately pulled it out 6-5. to five. Uh, They scored, I want to say, one in the, the, the eighth, but then Kansas City battled back. So the, I think it was it was like 6 to Six to one, maybe, right? Kansas City battle back in the top of the ninth. So maybe their bats are starting to heat up. Um, and they scored four runs in the ninth, by the way. Um, so, yeah, this could be a decent spot. Two good pitching outings yesterday for the starters. So, again, like the starters did their job, but five runs came in the eighth and ninth. This would have been an under yesterday. Let's get an under today with what I would consider two better pitchers on the mound. Um, and like I said, Kansas City, I think that they do, do battle. Uh, do let's speak Evan right do battle back after uh, what they did yesterday so give me Kansas City as well as a slight lean towards the under 4-3 Kansas City that's what I like Mets Dodgers in all honesty this is one that we're not going to probably be looking at um, overall so we could just skip ahead but again I, I like the Dodgers in some sort of parlay but game number one so nothing in this one if we're betting game number one I'm not touching game number two but I do want to know, let me know in the comments what you guys think of doubleheaders. Are you like me? And it's kind of like, if it's a doubleheader, it's just so many variables. Seems kind of weird. Hard to beat a team twice. Yada, 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 right? I just don't seem to like doubleheaders. So let me know in the comments. Do you like doubleheaders? Because I know some people that are like, that's the time to capitalize because books are kind of scrambling two games at the same time. Um, but to me, I'm like, yeah, I'll stay. I'll stay away. That That's my opinion on doubleheaders. All right, Texas taking on Arizona. We don't have a confirmed pitcher here for Texas yet. I believe it's going to be Dane Dunning, um, I believe. Um, in terms of what we like here, I do think that this could be uh, a Texas spot for plus money. Um, Brandon Fat on the mound for Arizona. He's been really good. I get it. But Dane Dunning has been really good at home. So if Dane's the pitcher... I think that we could look at Texas, who, you know, it's hard to argue that they haven't been struggling, right? Like, they have. Um, or hard to argue that they have been struggling, I should say. But Arizona also is just kind of like a hit-or-miss team right now for me. No pun intended. So, with Dane Dunning, who I trust at home for plus money, could be a decent spot. So, give me Texas on the money line. I'm not absolutely in love with it, but uh, I'm having a hard time getting to Arizona because, again, like these two teams, um, with if you say the pitching is equal, which some people might not say it is, but Dane Dunning, again, very good at home this year. If you say the pitching is equal, then I could kind of see uh, this being a spot in which we like 
Texas's bats over Arizona uh, against righties. So, yeah, on the money line, though, nothing nothing too crazy there. In terms of the total, I guess I could be convinced of uh, pulling the trigger on and over here if I'm, you know, betting on Texas's bats coming alive. But, uh, again, like, I don't think that I'm in love with this matchup, and we still want to know who's pitching for Texas. Right now, probably Dane Dunning, but I don't see that confirmed at uh, this point in the morning. All right, Colorado taking on Cleveland. Uh, this line is kind of confusing to me. You know, um, Cleveland minus 148 right now. I get that they're in Colorado and Coors. Um, Tristan McKenzie on the round, mound going up against Ryan Feltner, though. Uh, this Cleveland lineup, like, I, I, again, like, they, they should have the better offense. Didn't look like it yesterday. It was 8-6 win for Colorado. But I still think I'd take a chance on a Cleveland team that, you know, throw out that last loss. They were on absolute fire, right? They think they won eight straight nine straight prior to that loss so yeah i'm gonna lean towards i'm gonna lean towards cleveland here in this spot for minus 140 ish odds um to kind of bounce back and get back to winning baseball total sitting at 10 and a half this is a tough one you guys know i love to fade the altitude i think this one finishes like five to three five to four at most so give me the under i like fading the altitude here even though it doesn't always work out yesterday it definitely didn't all right, L.A. taking on the Yankees. If you can snag this at a an 8.5, which I do think those 8.5 lines are out there, I don't mind looking at the over. I also don't mind the uh, the first five over either, but you're kind of risking the idea of the Yankees being able to get to a pretty bad L.A. bullpen. Um, but, yeah, overall, I think that this there could be some serious runs here. Griffin Canning on the mound for the Angels. Um, he's nothing to write home about whatsoever. Uh, going up against Nestor Cortez, who is having a decent year, but not on the road. So his season whip is 1.07. On the road, he's got a 1.62 whip. His season FIP is 3.3. On the road, he's got a 1 point, uh, 5.2 FIP. Batting average against 223 on the season. On the road, 292. So I think the Angels can get to Cortez today. Not enough for me to like the Angels on the money line. <coughs> But certainly enough for me to like an over in this spot. Um, I don't mind for plus money taking the over nine. But if you can get if you can get a excuse me if you can get eight and a half, I think this could be a spot. I also don't mind looking at the over. I want to say like four and a half, maybe uh, three and a half in the first five either. So yeah, definitely some considerations for different iterations. Considerations for different iterations of overs in this spot. Um, that was like poetic, guys. If you made it to this point in the video, comment over O V E R. Spelling B champ. Comment over if you made it this far in the video. I like the Yankees on the money line, even though they're juiced, uh, but I definitely like some form of the over here. I had Seattle taking on Houston. This is a weird one for me because Seattle definitely has the better pitcher on the mound. Luis Castillo is going up against Hunter Brown here. If you look at their stats, one is like a green light going through, and then the other one's like, stop, it's a red light um, in terms of our dashboard. So I do think that this is a tough spot to, to like Seattle, I guess. But they won yesterday 3-2. Um, Bryce Miller pitched against Valdez. Uh, so I think that this could be another spot for them. But for Houston's offense to be priced at plus money, uh, in Houston's offense specifically against um, right-handed pitchers, um, I think it could be a decent spot to pull the trigger on Houston. They're kind of going good game in terms of their offensive output. Literally good game, bad game, good game, bad game. Not the best two runs yesterday. They could be due for a good game, but I think I'm going to trust the pitching in this one. That total is down at 7.5, so I think that they, you know, books definitely think Castillo is going to hold that Houston offense in check. Give me Seattle here um, on the money line. Uh, like I said, I think that this one stays kind of low scoring based on where the books have come with that line um, and the fact that, you know, Castillo's on the mound. So I'll lean towards I'll lean towards Seattle as well as the under, but I think that there's a way to get to Houston there if you like them. So don't let me talk you off of it if you're already thinking Houston this morning. In terms of the total, like I said, under as well. All right, Padres taking on Miami. Uh, Lazardo on the mound for Miami, who Lazardo's had two really good starts back to back uh, against the Mets. He went six innings, no earned runs, seven Ks, and then went up against Milwaukee here. Eight innings pitched, just three hits, four Ks, 12 pitches per inning. So Lazardo may be kind of starting to absolutely find his rhythm. We remember at the beginning of the year, he did kind of struggle. Um, going up against Matt Waldron here, who's on, uh, who's starting for San Diego. Obviously, he's going to throw the knuckle, and, and it's kind of weird, and and maybe, you know, Miami Net might not be able to hit it, but I'm going to trust Lazardo, who his stats on the road this year are kind of abysmal, but I kind of like his spot here against a San Diego team that I would never tell you is hitting all that well against lefties. So, screw it for plus money. Let's go. I don't know if it's worthy of the psycho alert alarm. We'll touch it, but I like Miami here on the money line. Um, in terms of the total, we're looking at seven and a half, right? This is probably a spot in which if Miami were to win, it's only because they pulled out three or four runs. So 
because I wanted to correlate to, I guess, my money line play, I think this one's probably like a 4-3 win for Miami, which meaning we'll stick it to the under. And again, we have to rely on Lazardo, not the offense. We have to rely on Lazardo to kind of put us in a good spot here. So I'll lean towards the under as well. All right, last game of the slate here. Giants taking on Philadelphia. Uh, Zach Wheeler on the mound for the Phillies. Going up against... I've seen Mason Black. I've also seen Spencer Howard, I believe. Um, so I'm not sure exactly who's pitching for the uh, for the the Giants here. If it's Howard, I guess it's if it's uh, Spencer uh, Mason Black or Spencer Howard. Uh, I still like the Phillies, um, and we're probably going to run with them first five. Uh, run line like we always do because that's been so profitable i know i get the comments being like mix it up and all that it's like if it cashes it cashes like we've literally lost like three phillies run lines this season and we've probably hit double digits so it, it's kind of a cash cat right now i'm probably jinxing the hell out of it but nonetheless give me phillies on the first five run line i'll trust zach wheeler all day long um, in terms of a total overall it's kind of a tough one because we don't know who's pitching for san francisco but overall i think that you know Zach Wheeler holds uh, San Francisco down, but uh, the Phillies offense looks good. So maybe a team total over for Philadelphia. Um, you might be able to get a good line just due to the fact that, you know, this total is at seven and a half, right? Um, and their their first five over two and a half is for plus money. Let's see, full game. Um, if you were to grab them at over four and a half for minus 110, that might be a good spot as well. So we shall see. Keep an eye on the pinned comment. Guys, that's going to wrap for me in the MLB today. Hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. We'll catch you guys in the next one, right? Peace out.